morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you're listening to this. My name is Andreas with Grace Healing. Uh, welcome, everyone, and have with me Larry. Hi, Larry. Welcome. Welcome. Good. It has been a while. You know, I just looked and I saw that we made over 30 videos, you and I, our yes. talks that we have. So I look forward to another interesting topic today. And what we want to approach is corporate governing or the, the, the theme of corporations and, and corporate system entanglement, I think was the word that you used, Larry, when we talked about it. Before we get into it, I was looking, as I always do, practical person as I am, what does corporate mean? What does a corporation mean to set the groundwork for our discussion? Corporate really comes from the Latin corporare, which means make or fashion into a body furnish with a body. So things, uh, parts being put together as a whole and corporation being a place where people work will be a number of individuals empowered to do business as an individual. Yes. But there could also be a church. It could be a political party. It's all individuals, all parts or coming together. Organizations or any aspect of a singular body of humanity, human drawn, drawn together. Exactly. And I'm thinking, actually, I would like to replace the word corporate with systems, because okay. it's basically the same idea, right? Systems are lots of parts working together. And it feels to me that the systems, how they were set up by us humans, are very dual in nature. You know, win, lose. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Even though people say, let's create a win-win, which, you know, in my opinion, is often just a deep seated try to <laughs> to make it look good but it yes. always seems that the systems are kind of like a dual approach and very transactional so larry i know you have ideas about you know what what you're meaning or what do you think about corporate but are we moving away from a transactional life that's how i feel it, it, it seems to be becoming more transitional and not so much more about achieving results with transactions that's interesting because I hadn't thought of it that way, but I mean, um, so you're saying that you're seeing it more of a shift to transitional awareness throughout the whole group instead of one group heading toward a certain result. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and it seems to be a transition, you know, as soon as, you know, look, if you look at political movements, for example, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about a transaction anymore. It's about an idea being transitioned into so that everybody will accept it. But it seems like the, you know, the more it gains speed in, in any corporate environment or any system, uh, there's a transition happening. So I feel like the world well, is changing. If we witness it accurately over the body of humanity right now, it's not governed in a direction toward blessing. It, it started out with a blessed and altruistic view in the beginning, but it has become fragmented broken and disruptive in many cases. Now, I'm sure there's many examples that we, see, we aren't seeing reported on that are in a blessed transition or heading to a transactional result. But what we're witnessing right now is the lack of knowledge rising. And in God's description, he says, my children perish for the lack of knowledge. And as you know, within Grace Healing, we work on teaching about the process of the spiritual nature of what's unfolding, not just what we see upon the earth. What is governing these things from underneath? What is coming up and making these things form greater destruction instead of becoming blessed? And what has happened is people have lost sight of how the heavens interact with one another. They've lost how spiritual influence can govern the nature of an individual, and how demonic influence can govern the nature of a body of individuals. And that's the key point that I wanted to touch on here today was the importance of understanding the difference between individuality on a spiritual journey and corporate entity being governed through the demonic. And that's where a lot of people don't see the difference between the two. So if I'm embraced personally of spiritual hatred or anger or hostility or aggression, that's one thing. 
But when you see a corporate entity governed in anger, aggression, hostility, and violence, that is demonic at level. And without getting into a whole lot of, there's a lot that can be described. Like people understand the angelic forms when they describe the angelic forms that have made um, appearances upon the earth. They describe them as huge, magnificent, glowing and radiant beings. Remembering that the demonic is the opposite of this angelic description. And they are too great in form or mass to manifest within an individual. Therefore, they fragment into creation into the lower heaven, which is the heaven that we reside within, the earth and all visible planes. And then they manifest within the hearts of those people that make covenant to a single body, a single entity of a corporate form. And the description you gave within the Latin is a perfect reference to that because it describes how bringing a group together to manifest a corporate body of individuals progressing toward a certain measurable result is the key of what's going on in the demonic. So when a person goes to work within a corporation, all of a sudden they find themselves governed in ways that they don't normally move themselves in the public world. They move differently, they function differently, they respond differently, and they see even individuals that they know as friends, like, wow, you know, I went out with Jim the other day and we went off, and we had dinner, we had this great time, and he's totally different than he is at work. So there's little hints of it here and there, but people never center upon looking to God's presence, say, how is that difference significant to my role within the spiritual process? And, you know, I think if I can jump in, I'm sorry to interrupt, yes, but uh, that's exactly what I was driving at when I said the difference between transactional and transitional. You know, I think with the younger generations coming up now, they mm -hmm. are not willing to submit anymore just to a transaction. Just I have to go to work because I have to make money, because my boss said I have to do this or right. that. They are wanting a transition, you know, that starts within. But I think it's a hard task because the systems are so big and so, you know, yeah. influential, you know, it's, it's probably, it's not easy to deal with. And I think that's what the world is going through right now. Well, in one respect, in, in the ignorance of our humanity, people have lost sight of the fact through personal arrogance or an elevated perspective of oneself within their belief system, People don't understand that corporations or corporate entities within the body of humanity were designed specifically to reveal the demonic. Now, some people in the audience are going to go, oh, what do you mean reveal the demonic? Because they fear the demonic. Because they've lost sight of the fact that Yeshua gave them the greatest power within all creation and took from Lucifer the keys to the heavens, meaning the power to create. So Lucifer has zero power, but that which we give him. The spiritual realm has zero power, but what we give it from within. And that power we give it is the power that Yeshua gave us. So what people don't understand is the corporate entity of, let's say, a, a fraternal organization. Like, let, let's pick anyone. You could pick a college fraternity or a, a Lions Club or a Masons group or whatever you want to call it, a fraternal organization. The structure of humanity, that corporate entity was designed specifically to reveal the demonic. Not in fear, but as an instrument of revelation to relinquish it and choose not to embrace it. However, through the ignorance of humanity, they don't understand that these things were formed in such a way that they were to reveal the demonic. So within these corporate entities, they get demonic governance and demonic mindsets coming into them and they go, oh, we need to act upon these because we're in agreement within this fraternal organization that we're supposed to make a covenant to one another that if anybody comes against our family, we shall kill them. And there are fraternal organizations right now that form covenants with one another at the higher levels where they talk to killing those that come against their belief. Not even physically to harm them, but just that they come against their belief. 
Now, I know many people in these fraternal organizations that are loving and supportive of their families, and they don't even know the words they're speaking when they go form these covenants in these corporate entities that they are called to function in. They were called to function within these to choose and sit there. And when they see a covenant that says that you are supposed to first establish a covenant unto this fraternal organization above that which is your origin and creator, you are supposed to place this covenant first. We as humans, if we weren't outside of knowledge, would look at that and say, huh, this doesn't align with the nature of me placing God first. I choose not to make a covenant of murder, even if it's defined or guised as self-defense. I choose not to embrace this mindset because it does not align with the nature of my God. So again, the fraternal organization, whether it's a Catholic church or a Christian body of believers or a Christian entity of some form in the, in the form of a, um, a, monas a monastic group, monastery type practice, if we look into any of these, we will see every single one of them over these last 2,000 years have evidenced within them the demonic. And I know, being raised a Catholic, when I recognized that, it was like, wow. And for us to recognize as a body of believers, you mean the corporate entity of our church belief or our foundational faith belief is an instrument that reveals the demonic? Yes. Anytime it reveals something that is not of God, it is there as an instrument of truth to position you in power, not subjection. And the perfect example I love to use is one from scripture, that it says you are to fear the Lord your God. That right there is a covenantal agreement within the Christian body right now that says, well, fear is a good thing. Well, God is not fear. God even says at a previous place within scripture, I have not given you a spirit of fear. For I have given you a spirit of faith that you would walk with strength and clarity and reveal my glory in all that you do. So what I used to see when I was younger, and I kind of used to get verbally slapped around by priests or ministers when I would say it is, we're not supposed to fear God. And that's not what it says. It doesn't say fear your Lord, your God, because I could see on the page, God blessed me in a way that I was able to see that the page was different. And it said, you are to hold Yahweh Elohim in awe above all things of creation. Awe and fear are completely different words. So to be in awe is a state of magnificence, awe, ma and just like, wow, state is totally different than, whoa, oh, whoa. Th there's a difference in the two. And I believe that there is no place for fear. I mean, my son and I were even watching a movie yesterday that was really a fun movie. And it was about go-karting in um, Australia. And this coach was teaching him. He said, you gotta keep fear because fear will keep you under control. And in my, in all humility and in, 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 in my heart, I understand what he was saying, but what really needed to be was divine discernment, clarity and wisdom, not fear. Because fear will force a person into a place where they will make a decision fear imposed instead of divinely guided. So that's how the corporate entities govern us is through the demonic because the demonic fragments enters upon multiple humans who are drawn to a like belief, that law of attraction that we've heard through the law, the secret, which is not explained correctly there, but as you are drawn together in a like belief, then that demonic within you, anger or judgment. Our faith is the only faith. Ours is the only one. Ours is the best. Those are the guys that are wrong. That's the spirit of high judgment but it is fragmented into a body of people. And then when they coalesce within a group, the high judgment can rise within their midst and all of, a, all of a sudden it becomes the critical spirit, judgment against others and putting down of other faiths. So then the church not knowing that that's what it's designed for goes quiet and doesn't say, wait, we as a body need to come together and release this demonic form because we need not judge those who are in another belief form. God knows of them. 
but we can pray increase upon them for increased wisdom. We pray freedom and release from the spirit of high judgment, and we move forward in this faith we choose without judgment, but governed through love and observation of others within their journey, that they might recognize glory within their journey and be elevated to greater understandings within their beliefs. That's what's happened within faith practices. They've lost sight of the entity of the demonic, and then they get governed spiritually within self through self-righteousness or any other aspect within themselves. You know, I got, when we got into this conversation, my mindset was it just changed now. But, you know, we had many discussions about this. But when I got into it, I was thinking systems are intrinsically maybe not bad, but complicated, and uh, we want to stay away from it. And we see that in the world, people are trying to move away or change systems. So, you know, here in the US, and not to become too political, but there is a huge thing going on where systems could change in the next few months. So me as a citizen here, mm -hmm. being faced with these kind of controversies and demonic rising, how in maybe two or three steps would you advise, can I deal with it? You know, in, in, well, in a non-transactional way, maybe. Maybe it's in a transitional way. First of all, people have completely forgotten Yeshua's instruction where he said to receive all things in blessing. What we see is this, like when you're citing what's going on within this nation right now, people are looking upon everything as broken, damaged, or wrong instead of looking at what it's stirring in them. So we see this corporate entity that is protesting against something. And we don't recognize that, wait a minute, this wasn't supposed to be an instrument of divide. That's the demonic side of it. We were supposed to recognize what came up within these atrocities or these experiences that people encountered and say, okay, this is supposed to be an instrument of blessing revealing that these corruptions are present within the system. Now let us move forward in a transitional, like your words, <clears throat> a transitional change towards a blessed result within this corporate entity of corporate America, of corporate civil protection, or of the corporate entity of race. See, people don't understand that within the divine, there is no race. There is no separation of race. There is only oneness. There is wholeness. Within humanity, we've set up these corporate entities of race, Asian, Black, White, Native, American. We've set up these boundaries of sorts. And when we see a divide between those, we think it's normal. And then we protest against how one was hurt and the other had power over them. Instead of looking at it and saying, okay, those that were harmed, what are we going to do to elevate all at the same level? What are we going to do to raise all upon the same platform and looking upon revealing love, glory, grace, peace, unity, and the perfect manifestation of God's glory in all things that we do. So coming back to your three statements, we, we go to the basic simple form that we provide within grace healing. First, God, Yahweh's holy presence. We see something that comes up corporately. We have to recognize that something stirs in us. God is not outrage but we feel outrage within ourselves for something we witness on the corporate entity of America. So if we sense outrage, we must come before the presence of God, number one. Number two, we must then relinquish any outrage. We must then relinquish any hatred because the corporate entity we are observing is stirring that demonic form of hatred or outrage within us. Therefore, we will be totally ineffectual in any aspect of moving things towards a transitional blessing. We will only be an instrument of moving things towards a transition of suffrage, destruction, mayhem, and 
disorder. And that's what we're seeing in the protests is people are not being governed by the divine. They're being governed by self-will. What can I gain? What can I do to make my point heard? Which even that's been lost because in outrage, they're not even conveying their message anymore. They're conveying a message of destruction rather than a message of transition because they are not going God first. So God first release, like, like even the spirit of larceny, the desire to steal. So we release the spirit of larceny. We release the influences that are governing the nature of our decisions and actions while we're in a process of protest. Those protesters should be out there. And we watch these other countries that turn around and people come out and they just stand silent, quiet, nothing, no aggression, no hostility. And the civil law doesn't even know how to respond to it. Because like you described, it's a transitional process that has become something new. Now I would challenge each of those people that go out in protest through silence to change their mindset to become rally in transition toward blessing. So as they stand there in that silence, let not the silence be one of outrage, one of hate, one of deception, one of manipulation. Let it be one of truth. Let it be one of self-reflection and a time of silence standing in a body of people that choose God as the governing force within that space. In other words, as I stand here, you know, I still feel outraged for what I witnessed on Facebook the other day, or I feel outraged for what I witnessed on YouTube the other day, or I saw the news and I saw this situation unfolding where an individual was shot. I choose to release what's within me. And they stand there in that crowd, not telling the civil authorities what's wrong with you, but first relinquishing all that is within self relinquishing any ties that may have formed within you because you glommed onto this corporate entity that is being governed demonically to destroy and become one within the corporate entity to change it to one that brings transition of change and elevation and edification and growth, renewal, increased wisdom, increased love, increased unity. And that would be where I would say people could go is the first God, second release that which within self, then join the body you are called to be a part of, to be the instrument within their midst, to become God within their midst, to free the demonic that governs that corporate entity. Wonderful. That's great. And I uh, just jotted down one key statement that you made that I want to take on Go for it. And, and encourage that others do too. And that is practice a message of transition. To me, yeah. that encapsulates everything that was said, you know, from seeking God first, releasing and relinquishing outrage and, and hostility, and then join the body of what I'm called for to do here and be here on, on this earth. So yeah. wonderful message, Larry. I think we can wrap it up unless you have something else to oh, add. Definitely, yes. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, as you know, gracehealing.org is our website. We have the phone numbers on there for Larry and for Ina. You can reach out to them for one-on-one -on -one prayer and contemplation at any time. They're open for that. We also have gracehealing.video, which is a direct link to our YouTube channel, where we have a huge assortment of things that you can listen to. And we'll be back uh, next week, right, Larry? Yes. All right. Be blessed, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Have a great week. Take care. Bye. Yeah.